overview of accident in Australia. Esso has a gas plant experienced. A catastrophic failure in Longford. During the morning of Friday, the 25th of September 1998. A pump supplying heated lean oil to heat exchanger GP905 in gas plant number 1. Went offline for four hours. Due to an increase in flow from the Marlin gas field. Which caused an overflow of condensate in the absorber. Two workers were killed. And eight others injured. Natural gas supply to the state of Victoria. Was severely disrupted for two weeks. The Victorian state government established. Investigation Commission to publicly investigate the causes of the accident. Organization. Built in 1969. The plant at Longford is the onshore receiving point for oil and natural gas output from production platforms in Bass Strait. The Longford gas plant complex consists of three gas processing plants and one crude oil stabilization plant. In 1998, the Longford gas plant was owned by a joint partnership between ESSO and BHP. ESSO was responsible for the operation of the plant. ESSO was a wholly owned subsidiary of US-based company Exxon, which has since merged with Mobil, becoming ExxonMobil. ESSO plant was the primary provider of natural gas to Victoria and provided some supply to New South Wales. The Longford site, like most others in the process industry, had been the subject of several manpower reviews over the years to maintain its efficiency and competitiveness. The effect of shifting engineers to Melbourne was to lessen, in the Commission's view, the ready availability of specialist engineering knowledge, that is, materials and process, on the site, as opposed to operations knowledge which remained local. ESSO anticipated these changes, and made alternative arrangements, to ensure engineering knowledge accessibility. Engineers typically undertook both a surveillance role, and a project role, to assist with the former. ESSO introduced a process data transmitting system, PIDAS, that allowed Melbourne-based engineers real-time access to process variables. ESSO also retained a corporate aeroplane to make travel to the site easier. Plant at Longford ESSO Australia operates three gas plants to process gas flowing from wells in the Bass Strait. It also operates a crude oil stabilization plant, CSP, to process oil flowing from other wells in the Bass Strait. The gas plants are known as Gas Plant 1, GP1, Gas Plant 2, GP2, and Gas Plant 3, GP3. They are numbered in the order in which they were built, starting with GP1, which commenced production in March 1969. The incoming natural gas had liquid condensate removed in the slug catchers, while gases heavier than methane that is, ethane, propane, were removed by absorption, into an oil stream. GP1 is a refrigerated lean oil absorption plant, that commenced operation in 1969. Process. The lean oil circulation process flow diagram, clearly shows the oil circulating. In broad terms the process passes, chilled natural gas containing condensate, ethane, propane, and butane, into the absorber vessels, and in counter-current flow absorbs, the condensate in lean oil, at a temperature of about minus 20 degrees Celsius. The saturated lean oil leaving the absorbers, is termed rich oil. Rich oil is passed, after flashing rich oil flash tank, and heat exchange, to the ROD rich oil deethanizer. This is a fractionation tower, where methane is removed at the top, and heavier components collect in the bottom, and are recirculated by means of a reboiler. GP905. The item that failed in this accident. Background of accident. 
the plant had suffered a number of upsets due to the formation of hydrates. These were solid ice hydrocarbon formations in pipework. These incidents appear to have limited the problem solving activities of the operations team to assuming other upsets were hydrate related, when in fact they were not. A prior unrelated incident occurred on 28 August 1998, which led to many similar characteristics associated with the loss of lean oil circulation in GP1. This was not investigated. Had the incident on 28 August 1998 been reported, as it should have been, the danger of equipment becoming subject to dangerously low temperatures upon the loss of lean oil flow for any length of time would in all probability have become known as would the steps available to avert the danger. Sequences of accident. On morning of 25 September 1998, it was school holidays. Senior operations people were away. The most senior site person was maintenance superintendent. At 8.19 a.m., GP1201 trip. Not able to be restarted. Continued flow of condensate through plant. Temperature decreased to minus 48 degrees Celsius by 9.30 a.m. At 8.30 a.m., GP 922 leaked. Temperature differential. Maintenance people came to fix it. Step back 5x5 five five safety review. Shutdown of GP 1. Ice had formed on the unit. Resume of pumping heated lean oil into thaw it. Pumped oil into the heat exchanger at 230 degrees Celsius, 446 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature differential cause. A brittle fracture in the exchanger, GP905. GP905 ruptured cold catastrophic failure. About 10 tons of hydrocarbons released in 1 to 2 minutes. Ignited by fired heaters 170 meters away after 30 to 60 seconds. Fire impinged on pipe rack. Hydrocarbons from burning insulation entered control room. After 10 minutes initial ruptures of pipes. After 30 minutes major ruptures of pipes, a vapor cloud formed and drifted downwind. When it reached a set of heaters 170 meters, 560 feet, away, it ignited. This caused a deflagration of burning vapor cloud. Flame front burnt its way through the vapor cloud. Without causing an explosion. When the flame front reached the rupture. In the heat exchanger. A fierce jet fire developed. Aftermath. The rupture of GP905 released a large volume of hydrocarbons in the form of a thick cloud of vapor. The vapor subsequently was ignited by an open flame on a gas fired heater, giving rise to explosions and fires. During the process of fracture, the large vapor cloud had drifted with the prevailing wind in a south southwesterly direction towards gas-fired heaters, having an open flame, which were approximately 170 meter away, at the southern boundary of the plant. The fire at the plant was not extinguished. Until two days later, the Longford plant was shut down immediately, and the state of Victoria was left, without its primary gas supplier. Within days, Vencorp shut down the state's entire gas supply. The resulting gas supply shortage was devastating to Victoria's economy, crippling industry, and the commercial sector, in particular, the hospitality industry, which relied on natural gas for cooking. Investigation Commission. The Victorian state government established the S.O. Longford Royal Commission to publicly investigate the causes of the accident. Following the Longford accident, Victoria introduced major hazard facilities regulations to regulate safety at plants that contain major chemical hazards. These regulations impose a so-called non-prescriptive regime on facility operators, requiring them to demonstrate control of major chemical hazards via the use of a safety management system and a safety case. Failed heat exchanger, 
GP905. The vessel that exploded at Longford was a shell and tube heat exchanger. GP905, located in gas plant 1. The exchanger, though not rated for the low temperature, did not fail due to the low temperature alone. Following leaks from a nearby exchanger, GP922, the decision was made to reintroduce lean oil flow into GP922 to try and stop the leak. When the hot oil entered the exchanger, the radial expansion of the tube sheet provided additional stress, which the exchanger could not withstand. A catastrophic end failure occurred. To exchanger GP905, essentially the whole end was ripped open, and the contents of the exchanger, the ROD column, and all its interconnections, were rapidly released. The featured surface and the ligaments indicate that the crack propagated slowly. While it was in the weld, it is concluded that the failure in the channel was fast brittle fracture. Immediate causes. By using low temperatures and high pressures, GP1 employed lean oil to absorb hydrocarbon components from gas from Bass Strait to produce domestic gas and LPG. The process involved heat exchangers whose role in the production process was to heat rich oil at the bottom of a piece of equipment called a rich oil demethanizer. When the pumps were restarted, the hot oil flowing into the cold heat exchanger caused stress in the vessel. Just after 1 p.m. on 25 September, the heat exchanger vessel ruptured, releasing hydrocarbon vapors and liquid into the air. The vapors ignited, causing a series of massive explosions, and a fire that killed two workers, and injured eight others. Root causes. Esso had failed to conduct proper hazard identification, and risk assessments at GP1, and to develop operational procedures, to deal with identified risks. Esso's operations integrity management system, aimed to identify, assess, mitigate and control risks but it was so complex and poorly explained that the system was difficult to comprehend by management and by operations personnel in line with its corporate risk management strategy esso had planned a hazard and operability hazop study on gp1 for 1995 the study was designed to identify any significant route to a process upset operating problem, or hazardous incident. Although ESSO included the cost of such a study in successive budgets between 1995 and 1998, the study was never undertaken. No satisfactory reason was given for the deferral or abandonment of the HAZOP study. This failure to conduct a HAZOP study reduced the effectiveness of other risk management activities which the commission also criticized as inadequate damages two persons were killed in the accident and eight others were injured the fire at the plant was not extinguished until two days later about 10 metric tons of hydrocarbon vapor were immediately vented from the rupture the longford plant was shut down immediately and the state of victoria was left without its primary gas supplier within days the company shut down the state's entire gas supply. The resulting gas supply shortage was devastating to Victoria's economy, crippling industry, and the commercial sector, in particular, the hospitality industry, which relied on natural gas for cooking. It is estimated that 1.4 million households and 89,000 businesses were affected costing approximately Australian $1.3 billion. As natural gas was also widely used in houses in Victoria for cooking, water heating, and home heating, many Victorians endured 20 days without gas, hot water or heating. Gas supplies to Victoria resumed on the 14th of October. Lessons learned. 
develop procedures for future failures, with significant consequences, and train operators in these procedures. Hazard identification and detailed study of failure types essential. Safety management systems must be implemented and audited effectively. Design alarm systems so that the number of alarms is appropriate. Stop crying wolf. Control of escalation. There were significant changes in operating processes, staffing, and procedures at the ESSO plant, without thorough risk assessments being carried out for the changes. Recommendations required to evaluate the design of critical areas of Longford, required to show that its operating standards, practices, and policies are periodically reviewed, obliged to demonstrate its training programs and techniques impart knowledge of all identifiable hazards and the procedures required to deal with them. Penalties. ESSO was ordered to pay Australian $32.5 million to businesses which suffered property damage as a result of the incident. New regulations. The Commission recommended that the government introduce a compulsory system of safety reporting procedures to government for major hazard facilities, such as the Longford plant, without identifying the absence of such a requirement or the self regulatory environment as a cause of the explosion. Following the Longford accident, Victoria introduced major hazard facilities regulations to regulate safety at plants that contain major chemical hazards. These regulations impose a so called non prescriptive regime on facility operators, requiring them to demonstrate control of major chemical hazards via the use of a safety management system and a safety case. Other states have also implemented similar regulatory regimes. Petrozilt and Unimart. Consultants and trainers provide services of asset integrity management to oil and gas production fields, petroleum refineries, natural gas processing industries, petrochemical industries, chemical process industries, ammonia urea industries, and power generation plants. Website www.petrouni.com. Email info at petrouni.com. Phone 0092323267750. Thank you very much for watching the video. You may consider to subscribe, like, or sharing the video if it is worth doing.